Perfect. Okay. Okay. So uh, after bisection wonders from Ezine, uh, let's uh, dive into some design improvements on desktop uh, this time around. So annotations. Before, <clears throat> sometimes we got this this scenario where we have a document and there is no, no document, no comments, right? No, actually, in this example, there are comments, but we cannot see them. They are either cropped or hidden uh, because this because of the small uh, screen factor uh, of the user. Then, with the cool uh, canvas development um, uh, from uh, Kokai, uh, some of those things went away, some of the some of new, th new things appeared. These time annotations were super duper persistent at the point of blocking the actual document's content. Um, and again, thanks for uh, all the support and QA by Ezine and Aaron uh, that you know that helped to to basically plan a solution and a path uh, to to solve this. So after uh, we knew for a fact that we wanted we wanted to avoid introducing any drastic changes to the code. We wanted we don't want we didn't want to touch the new cool canvas bits uh, from Kokai, and we would be maybe nice to reuse the mobile wizard pieces uh, since they already bring uh, many things for free. So, and with that in mind, uh, maybe we could even bring some of that uh, improvement to tablets. Uh, maybe it would be even easier to keep track of the annotations. Uh, so between navigating uh, from content to annotations and, uh, and and back to the content. So here we have a normal big screen, let's say, and when we go back to a laptop screen or a slightly smaller screen, uh, we can still focus 100% on the document, but we know for a fact there are a couple of uh, annotations there, uh, and these wouldn't be possible with all the effort from uh, Shimon Klaus and all his, all his in development here. Uh, but when the user wants on his on, on or is ready to view the annotation, he can just press and see even all the all the comments that belongs to that specific thread. Sees the total of comments, and really nice is that this is a familiar user pattern. Not not only because it comes from from the mobile, but also it's a user pattern that is used in other productivity tools. So. We are not reinventing the wheel, we are just improving the user flow, even in this uh, slightly smaller uh, uh, screen uh, size devices. Now, next, anchoring. Before, we really didn't have any visual uh, feedback. There was no anchor icon. The user were, was forced to sometimes reach, uh, reset the anchor to be sure which option is, is set. And this was leading for too many problems regarding uh, like editing uh, wise. So after and uh, with the help of uh, Mert, we work on this little nice solution uh, that now we have an icon that it says is specifically where it's anchored. That icon, it's not a static icon. That icon changes depending on the mode you are. So when you start to drag and drop that, that icon, it transforms in, into a pointer with a, SME, uh, with a SME transparency. So you can really pinpoint accurately the character that, that you want to anchor, in the case you want to anchor to a character. And of course, there was many styles and improvements around that, but I don't think I have that much time. So let's get busy. Uh, it was really important to get messages out there, meaning that uh, it was important to show to the user when the application is busy uh, and why it's busy, what it's doing. So, uh, because the more uh, transparent, uh, the, the, the faster we send those messages, uh, the user will get this feeling that actually the, the Collabor Online is very responsive, even if sometimes the, the waiting period that, that doesn't change, but at least there is some visual feedback. So he knows what is going on and he's reassured that everything's okay. So here we have an example of a busy pop-up uh, that can be used for these ongoing processes, being downloaded, downloading or uh, connecting 
any message of that of that uh, type. Uh, the cool thing about about this is that it's an anime. This this busy pop up appears uh, and uh, with a SVG animated SVG, and this SVG, since it's within the code, is then automatically tinted to the color of the respective. Uh, document type or respective uh, app, if you will. And this is nice because at the end you have this really nice um, color palette consistency uh, from the notable bar until the content of the uh, dialogue. But not all of these uh, messages are uh, about ongoing states, sometimes are about on and off states. So in uh, status so in this case we have for instance this when this the server has been disconnected or when the server is now ritual <clears throat> and so we have this new component uh, that we call snack bar it's not a term coined by me it's actually a term well known in the user experience circles but basically it's nothing more than a snack bar sized element that uh, pops up from the bottom and uh, discreetly uh, but still very very easily reachable um, if there is an action needed to be presented there um, now a couple of ideas in terms of to do would be to expand this level of consistency to other feedback pop-ups so improving uh, even when we have the doc when the document is idle or other type of messages that we can uh, expand this level of consistency instead of just having a, a big pop-up with big text and no uh, visual work around that status bar it's another topic uh, and it's another element very important to many users uh, from journalists to project managers because it displays a very quick overview of many things without further clicks or with additional clicks you can even have additional actions so it's it's really a, a, a nice element to have um, and we started to receive this feedback from from some customers that some some you some some customers that uses uh, that use uh, collabora online as a previewer that uh, they were not understanding the big difference between read-only mode and edit mode. So they would end up in read-only mode and they started to uh, look for uh, tools to edit the document. And then just after three, four minutes, they realized that, ah, okay, this is preview mode. So with that in mind, why not use the, the status bar to, guess what, <laughs> display uh, status? Uh, so here we are previewing something uh, in read-only. And because it's not like the default uh, status, especially on, on desktop, uh, it's slightly a little uh, prominent. But uh, when we go back to the edit mode, uh, it's still there, but now much more discreet. Uh, but it just reassures the user uh, what is going on. Uh, and again, you see this this level, this this um, you, you see uh, that there is a pattern here. It's all about consistency and reassuring the user. Um, another big topic is the new sidebar. Uh, we have no we have an, um, no canvas anymore here, so it's native, thanks to Shimon, um, as he already dis described. Um, they uh, the sidebar is animated, so opens and closes elegantly. There is many uh, there was many uh, cosmetic improvements, alignment, padding, uh, you name it. Uh, how, the icons that that op that trigger dialogues, uh, just uh, a bunch of them, and still many things are coming in. Uh, and thanks for Andreas Keynes to also help um, Sidebar to get more and more matured for our 2021 uh, release. Uh, notebook bar. So there was there is many things to talk about notebook bar. So I will uh, and uh, Andreas Kent has already a talk about structure of notebook bar and goes in great detail. I will I will just say that there was many layout improvements, uh, consistency in terms of margins, padding, uh, the style preview got completely revamped how we how it looked, the different states of over status, click status, the shortcuts uh, bar also got revamped, um, many fixes. Uh, the undo redo button as well improved uh, now it's more visible when the document is unsaved um, all these 
and some more, like for instance, the on-off switches, uh, this type of elements, the buttons that work like on-off switch, were all, there were also many improvements. Uh, this is just a couple of them. Uh, dialogues, there was also a lot of improvements uh, around dialogues, not not only uh, the, the like around shortcuts, so to visually and semantically represent uh, key um, keys on the keyboard, um, but also to be a, so the user is able to copy paste some information that in many dialogues were not possible. Uh, the help dialog also got a lot of fixes. I have this idea that I would like them to discuss in the Q&A uh, about using maybe Cypress to also create some of the screenshots that we are using in the help dialog. So they are always up to date. JS dialogs, I don't know, it's just a lot of them. So I will just skip and just show you uh, that there was a lot of elements shared between uh, JS dialogs. That's the beauty of it. Uh, that uh, all, since those elements got improved, all the JS dialogues got improved as well. Um, also, I see now that there is a scroll bar there. Yes, there was also improvements regarding scroll bars um, and many other dialogues that didn't have uh, the love they deserved. They started to receive some more attention. Uh, it's not done. We still there's still more things to go. Uh, you see that there is this tunnel uh, uh, dialogue. That there was also some inf improvement regarding the VCL uh, theming and even the, the the tabs. But there's still a lot of things to do. Uh, but I think we are in in a, in a good path. Um, and that's it. And I have the feeling I got uh, I end up to do it very fast. The talk. Well, but yes, but we've we've gone quite uh, over time. So generally, oh, ah, so perfect. You're catching okay, up, Pedro. that's brilliant. Thanks. Perfect. Yeah. So.